Good morning, guys, here from Hong Kong. Absolutely fantastic sunny morning here. And we've got some pretty exciting new news, new rumors, and definitely also some news. So we're going to get straight into that. Uh, good to see everyone on the chat here. Uh, good morning or good evening to you, depending on where you are, Barella there. It's late in Spain. Well, thanks for staying up. Uh, Esteban, uh, Felix is the absolute goat. Um, you're reminding me of goats, which I appreciate. Uh, why is he reminding me of goats? He hasn't lost his mind. No, uh, for every single like, I donate one cent to the gentle barn, these fluffy fuzzy creatures in these sanctuaries. So please be generous with your likes. And yes, there are lots of goats. Um, in fact, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a goat-related Neo story this morning. <laughs> That's what we're going to look at. So what's the big news? This here is the big news. I am basically streaming my phone screen onto uh, the screen here so you can see it. That is my uh, phone. Hang on, where did you guys go? Here we are. So what is this big story out? Well, this little story here, which sort of doesn't look all that exciting, but why is it exciting? Because the chap standing in this photo is the Sinopec chairman. And I'm going to explain who Sinopec are. Sinopec is a state-owned enterprise. They are the largest oil refiner in Asia and they own 27 thousand petrol stations in China. So I think you are starting to see where I'm going with this. Um, Dr. Robert Thomas here, good to have you on the chat. Hello to Florida. Good evening to you, I guess. Uh, wonderful to have you on here. So what are they doing? Well, they are inspecting. Here is William Lee. And can you see his goatee? Well, the man is sporting a goatee, which is always a good sign. That's always a good omen. Where's our goat? Here is Baron von Goat. So guys, please smash that like button for the goats. Uh, the goats are supporting Neo here. That's why William Lee is sporting his, his goatee. Uh, they are basically inspecting a new battery swap station. Uh, you can see here faintly in the background the Neo mascot. There's always somebody dressed in that mascot, which I think is essential to launch any kind of battery swapping station. So they are talking about that. And what does it all mean? Well, that's what we're going to get to. You can see here also in the background, you can see a Sinopec petrol station of which they have 27,000. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on this. So if, I think you can just about see this. Uh, this little uh, image here is China, obviously. Now, there are basically two gas station companies in China. One is PetroChina, that's more inland, and one is Sinopec, and that's basically the coastal towns, which are the highest income level towns. So, you know, Guangzhou, Shanghai, Beijing, all of that. That is all Sinopec. So they have basically the... Um, 27,000 petrol stations in the wealthiest parts of China, perhaps with the exception of Chengdu, but really every other major uh, really upmarket city, if you will, in terms of, of income levels uh, is basically in, 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 this, in this area. Uh, Guangzhou down here with 300 million people, etc. Shanghai in the middle, uh, all of that. So uh, what are they doing? Well, the Chinese government has been very, very supportive of these EV change. So they basically want to basically turn off petrol, right? Some people are saying they might ban petrol by 2030. That might be a little bit early, I think, but that's, that's just one of the rumors out. And what does that mean for Sinopec, this massive Chinese government-owned company? Well, it would mean they would basically go out of business. So what have they been doing? Well, one of the things they've been doing is they've been adding convenience stores and, you know, KFCs and, and this kind of thing. They're trying to find another revenue stream. And another is that they have been adding charging stations. And they've been doing that always in cooperation with the government, uh, sometimes with the state grid. In Beijing, particularly, we've seen that. And they are basically trying to find an alternative revenue stream. And if you're a little bit familiar with Chinese sort of state-owned enterprises, that's a very common theme. The Chinese government wants the new companies with the new tech and the new innovation to then essentially invest and cooperate with the old guard of companies. You see that with Alibaba and Tencent, they have shares in all sorts of state-owned enterprises because they want to get that tech and that knowledge in there. Um, uh, Kurt, uh, uh, welcome to the chat, GMO Free. I like your goat. Uh, well, good morning to Tokyo. Um, yes, this is all about goats as always. As always, guys, it's not financial advice. This is straight from the goat's mouth. Here he is, Baron von Goat. So uh, this is basically 
the most important partner who can roll out charging stations and battery swapping station. And that's what the rumor is, that we have seen them here together, uh, looking all very happy, lovey-dovey, shaking hands, uh, William Lee dressed in this uh, rather wintry outfit. It doesn't actually say where they are, but it looks like they are somewhere in the north of China because it looks freezing. So um, it's probably somewhere like Beijing, I would imagine. Um, and you can see him here shaking hands with them. And this is just part of China's grand plan for the EV industry. So um, if you look at um, Sinopec here, I think I had up here. Okay, so this is the chairman, Fu Cheng Yu of Sinopec. Uh, he was also the chairman of China Petroleum and Chemical Co. Yeah, that's at Sinopec. He was previously at Sinuk. Uh, which you might have heard about because it was uh, banned from the US. It was on that lovely blacklist. And there is a wider story here also. Um, so we had news at the beginning of last year that Sinopec was starting to put in vehicle charging stations, but we haven't seen that many yet. And But that was sort of an early one. Now, the fact that they are meeting with NEO and that William Lee shows up for it, and there is also a, a senior member of the Chinese government here, um, a, a, a sort of chairman of some some sort of, of wherever area they are in, it, it basically goes to me to show this triple threat uh, putting together. Polly there, good morning. I appreciate you joining in on this call. So in a nutshell, we have uh, the Sinopec inspecting here a battery charging station, shaking hands with William Lee, and they're doing this well, right next to a Sinopec station. If you're familiar with petrol stations in, the, in China, this is a Sinopec uh, petrol station there in the background, that red roof. Uh, there is one actually a couple of minutes down from my house here too. Uh, they basically run most of the petrol stations in the wealthy parts of China, all 27,000 of them. Now, what does it mean? Well, the plan, in my view, of the Chinese government and the industry is that the three leading EV companies, that's NIO, Xpeng and Li, they're all working together. We've already seen that all the charging stations, there's a standard. There is a Chinese standard for that plug. It works on all EVs except Tesla. Tesla are the only ones who have their own plug and their own charging stations. And that, I think, again, is perhaps uh, in intentional. I don't know whether it's intentional or part of Tesla's, but they are essentially missing out on the public grid that is being built by companies like Sinopec. Now, the second rumor is that Sino, that Neo, because they make their powertrain and their engines and their battery packs, the swappable ones, through XPT, uh, for those of you who missed my video on that, do check that out. Uh, basically, NEO's own factory is XPT. And yes, it is a huge factory and they make all the core parts of that. Now, who did they meet with last year? Well, they met with the chairman of Xpeng last year. And uh, Xpeng here, co-founder of Xpeng, as he spoke highly of XPT's um, products and expressed his anticipation for the future in-depth cooperation between the two sides on the electric power platform. So I do believe we are going to see Xpeng use XPT, which is 100% NEO owned. So forget that rumor that NEO doesn't have a factory. They do, they make all the, the engine, the, the, the powertrain, all those core components. Um, and they are gonna do that with NEO's technology. And that is just how these guys are cooperating and um, there was an article out here, let me find it here. Um, if you look at, um, when NEO was founded, uh, William Lee went to Li Xiang, who's the uh, Li auto founder, and basically asked him to invest. This was back in 2014. And Li basically said, um, I'm not gonna become a co-founder, but I'm gonna give you 15 million US dollars. And he is still a shareholder in NEO to, to my understanding. So you can see how interwoven these, these companies are. And that is just the way they want this industry to grow here, that they want to have the champion brands. So they are fully Chinese, fully Chinese made, and they are supporting each other. So we have, Li Auto investing early on in NEO. We're going to have Xpang using NEO's powertrain and electric motors as they move gradually from uh, this sort of hybrid plug-in to full EVs. Uh, and why is that going to happen? Because 
At the moment, if you want to get a new car in China, you basically need to apply for a license to get a license plate, and you won't get it if you're buying an ICE. You just won't get it. Forget about it. Basically, you have to give up your old car to get the new car, and you can recycle your license. If you want a new car in addition, or you haven't got a car yet and you want to buy a new car, your only option is to buy an EV. Otherwise, you simply won't get a license. EV licenses are easily available. And they are at the moment giving that license out for all EVs, including the sort of hybrids, if you will. But they are phasing that out. So uh, at some point, these uh, kind of plug-in hybrids that use a, a petrol engine somehow will no longer be getting those licenses and that is basically then means you can no longer pretty much sell hybrids you have to go full ev so i do think x is going to go down that route and yes i think they're going to do it with neo's technology because it's already there they can buy it that's the way xpt was set up to intentionally supply other companies with those uh, motors um uh, lots of you guys say on chat here, uh, Kurt, um, Malong, welcome, Kurt. Infrastructure already there, they just need to change electricity. This would be huge for NEO. Absolutely. Uh, Billy Bob, uh, our stock markets are closed tomorrow. Um, yes, they are. Well, you have one, the market has one day to sort of digest this. Alan, the good day, Felix, from Barber to NEO. I'm in on both 500 shares, NEO strong. Uh, welcome to the chat, guys. Um, so if you just look at, you know, Sinopaki a little bit, uh, there are the world's largest oil refining gas and petrochemical conglomerate absolutely enormous they're in beijing and that's i imagine where they have that um that meeting just and um yeah the largest refiner in asia 27,000 petrol stations and they have been scratching their head these last couple of years what to do with them because they know the revenues there will decline uh, so we're seeing um this big move into evs they have been building a few uh, charging stations, I would imagine that that's going to happen at all 27,000 of them. That'll be a huge boost for EVs. But the battery swapping technology, I think, is going to be a big one. And you know what I think? I think that battery swapping technology, which again is made by XPT, which is 100% NEO uh, subsidiary. So that's what you own through the NEO, NEO, um, NEO stock listed in, in New York. Again, I think they are going to license that, that technology. They are going to make those battery swapping packs. Um, under a standard size and standard technology and it'll be the NEO standard and that will be available to other car companies in, in China. So those battery swapping stations will be available not just to NEO, uh, that's my take on this, they are, will be available to Xpang and Li and it'll be a big, big advantage for Chinese brands essentially versus the rest of the world, i.e. Tesla. And I've always thought that that sort of thing would happen but we are really seeing them band together here in terms of investment in terms of corporations supplying each other with technology and then the state uh, being very, very supportive with uh, basically throwing Sinopec into the mix. And they also see it as beneficial to Sinopec you just have all these coastal 27,000 petrol stations. So basically all the prime areas in China, all the petrol stations are uh, by, by Sinopec. Uh, in inland, it's PetroChina. Uh, but that's in, in a way a little bit less important at this stage with the, the exception of a couple of big cities. Most of the major cities are along the coast uh, for historic uh, trading reasons and, and you know ports uh, tend to attract big cities. So I think this is a huge, huge, huge catalyst that the EV industry and therefore NEO and to some extent Xpeng and Li will take uh, here over the next couple of months in China that there is this boost by through cooperation and by getting the buy-in from Sinopec, 27,000 petrol stations. Imagine how many battery swapping stations they can they can build there. And Sinopec has essentially unlimited funds, right? I mean, one, they are the largest oil refinery or gas company, and of course they're government owned. So they are able to borrow at you know zero percent interest basically from state banks if they so choose and they can therefore build not just their future um, and therefore generate a future revenue for Sinopec and make that company survive on the on the on the petrol station side but also provide this big boost for um, for EVs and you know actually if you look at Europe you know Germany is mandated that all petrol stations essentially install a a charging um, unit and and it's just a smart thing to do isn't it because wh why are, are petrol stations where they are well people have spent a long time thinking about that and the real estate is in the right place it is typically at junctions it's at big roads they're spaced out in a sensible kind of a fashion and evs from that point of view are no different to petrol 
um, driven cars to ICEs. So simply tapping into a, a petrol station monopoly, which is what you have here, there are really just two. By tapping into Sinopec, which is the premium one, uh, NEO is gaining an enormous advantage, an enormous foothold, and it really is going to get them to their target uh, of battery as a, as, a, as a service and battery swapping stations that they've been talking about for two or three years, and they are massively behind schedule. I mean, we have to also be honest about that. We have 119 or 120 of them now. We were promised 600 last year, and, and obviously that didn't happen. And I can see why there are hurdles to this. It's difficult to find the real estate. You have to get everybody to agree. Uh, but if you do it with Sinopec, Sinopec will fix it because Sinopec is the government. And they want to build it, they'll just build it, they got the electricity, they get the permits, and it'll all be done. And, and NEO doesn't have to squabble with local authorities every single time they want to do it and talk to the guys who own the land and, and then try to convince the power company to put the lines in, you know, all this stuff. That takes months. And they've been, been kind of moaning about that, how, how difficult that is. And it makes a lot of sense that that's a trick, tricky thing to do. So to me, this is the solution. This is battery swapping on a whole new level. We're going to see an incredible network of them. Already, we have a pretty decent network, but this is just going to make it so much more widely available. And, and I think this will not just benefit NEO, guys. I do think this technology, partly because the government is now supporting it so much with Sinopec, and we have seen the government for some time saying they see battery swapping as part of the EV charging mix. They think it's part of the national policy to roll that out and support that. Here is the support that we, we are seeing. Uh, before it was just sort of, well, generally we are, we are bullish on the day of a building, charging stations to the government, but this is the first time we see this kind of cooperation here, in, in my view. And it, I think, also means battery swapping will come to other Chinese EV companies. I would not be surprised if Xpang and Li start to put cars out that also support battery swapping. And you know who's going to benefit from that? NEO. You might think, well, it competes with them, but no, they will use NEO's technology. NEO will make those battery packs. Uh, and, 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 you know, at, at XPT, you can see that. I can pull that up for you if you, uh, if you like. Um, let me see which one of the ones they had. It's... Uh, it's ESS, isn't it? Um, and I can show you what that looks like while that's loading. Here we go. Uh, that's the that's the battery module that is in every Neo car. And at the moment, these are made only for Neos. But they have been saying for quite some time that they want to uh, sell these. And you can see all the components here. This is quite a nice little illustration. It's on the XPT Global website. So that's the the battery management system. Neo makes that. Neo builds it. And then here you have. Um, a, uh, a uh, sort of safety mechanism basically to prevent it from blowing up. Uh, you have a cooling system in it. Again, all of this is NEO developed, NEO engineered, and NEO built. Uh, then you have charging. There's a charging unit to it, of course, which is what that is. Here. So you can plug in these units. And then, and I think that's kind of the exciting part we're talking about here. These are swappable. And this just illustrates how that works, uh, how it's possible to kind of... Um, yank them out from underneath the car. You can see those little, I don't know, whatever you call them, uh, screws is probably the wrong word, but basically there's a battery swapping connection um, and then there's a liquid cooling swapping connector. So also that can uh, get, get changed. And then uh, you have this uh, rather wonderful looking ESS module. So this is made by Neo guys, uh, just like Tesla makes its own battery uh, components. Uh, Neo does too. Uh, so we, we, let's take some questions here, guys. Um, I appreciate everyone joining in here. George, Neo price next week. Okay, we'll have a look at the chart too. Michael Hardy, hello from Portland. Do you think that India is going to move slowly to EV or quickly? Curious. Um, I, I think it'll take a little bit longer than China because it is a much more federal uh, country. Neo, uh, sorry, India is basically moving from two wheelers to four wheelers. That's really the trend. And they're sort of aiming there to skip the ICEs. So really the trend is moving from a, a bike to a car. I think that's the big one. And the government aims to curb pollution. And, and for that, they're going to move to EVs. So I think it'll happen, but I think it'll take quite a bit longer than it, it has in China, just because it's a much more um, kind of fragmented country. Each province has its own set of rules, its own set of taxations, etc. Uh, 
Uh, Robert says, hey, if that's true, the technology we get a license fee paid for them to every car sold by Expangly. Absolutely, that's besides the idea. Well, they just have to buy the component, won't they? But if you look at, um, where was that article we had out here earlier? Oh, okay, I've just, I've just closed it. You know, uh, they met at the end of last year with Xpang's founder and they, Xpang basically said, you know, I really look forward to, to cooperating with XPT. And why? Because Xpang doesn't really have this technology. They are putting in very small battery components and they're relying on that being charged by the car. It's sort of a hybrid really, uh, whereas you know, a NEO obviously in XPT, which is NEO's a subsidiary, is uh, 100% um, EVs. So the technology here, and certainly the battery swapping technology, is, is, a, is quite a fairly complicated one, and NEO's managed that. So yes, I think that's where they're going to go. Um, uh, Ken, so from Queensland here, uh, good to see you uh, from Sydney, George. Uh, you said I'll make a video on Baidu. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm behind, aren't I? Well, exciting things happen all the time, George. Uh, let me have another look at Baidu. I'm going to write it down on my lovely list. It's a fairly long list, though. Um, Ernesto, I've missed it. What is he reporting on? Okay, let me let me do a quick recap here, guys. So basically, we have here. This is from the Neo app. So I'm I'm, I'm sort of streaming this onto onto the computer from my my phone. Uh, we had this meeting yesterday. Um, between the chairman of Sinopec, uh, that is the biggest oil refiner in Asia, and they own 27,000 petrol stations, and not just any old 27,000 petrol stations, but the ones that matter. This whole uh, sort of yellowish light area here is basically the Chinese coast where all the tier one cities are, the cities with the highest income, and therefore where the most EVs are bought, the most, most NEOs are bought. Uh, think Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Shanghai, Beijing, all of that. That is all Sinopec. It's a monopoly. China is split in two. The blue area is PetroChina. The lighter area is Sinopec. Uh, and Sinopec are the ones we're talking about here. And they met here yesterday at a battery swapping station. They inspected it. Here's William Lee sporting his goatee. So speaking of goatees, guys, remember my goats and hit the like button. I donate one cent for every like to the gentle barn and these fluffy goats. They're not just goats there. They're all sorts of creatures. Um, but let's get back to uh, Neo. So here is the Sinopec chairman shaking William Lee, the, the, the co-founder and, and CEO of Neo's hands here. And what are they looking at? Well, they're looking at a battery swapping station. Apologies, guys, I can't make this any larger. It is as big as the um, the, the phone streaming app will, will allow us to make. But what you can see in the background is a red roof, and that's a Sinopec red. And then it also says that they're Sinopec. And so they are doing this on Sinopec land right next to a Sinopec station. They put a battery uh, swapping station there, and I, I believe that is the beginning of this corporation. Sinopec is fully state-owned and has this monopoly of 27,000 petrol stations and are basically scratching their head. They have been for the last year. What are we going to do? Where's our revenue going to come from? Because the rumor is that petrol will basically be banned by 2030 in China. That might be a little bit early, I think, but you know that's the trend the government's going in to. So Sinopec will eventually run out of customers. There will be no, no, no more ICEs cars on the road. And therefore, they're looking for additional revenue streams. Well, charging is the obvious one. They've been starting to do a bit of that, uh, rolling that out. But now we are seeing here the battery swapping of NEO or at Sinopec stations. Now, are they going to build 27,000 battery swapping stations? Um, I, I don't think that's quite going to happen, but this is going to get us to the target of 600. Uh, I think very quickly we had about 120 now and we were promised 600 last year. And the challenge has basically been to find the real estate, to find the partners, get the permits from the local authorities, get the permits from the local power company. All that goes away because Sinopec does it and Sinopec is the government. And if they want power, they want permits, they'll just get them because it's government policy. And there is also a, a gentleman here, I understand, who is a senior member of the government. So this is very much a part of that. Uh, and then even further to that is that the three companies, Neo, Xpang, Li, the sort of uh, triumvirate of, 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 of EV companies in China. They are working together. You have Li Auto as an early investor in NEO. You have Xpeng who've said they are going to use NEO's um, powertrain, essentially their battery technology, their engines, uh, and who makes them. What XPT does is the 100% NEO subsidiary. So NEO has a factory. I know some people believe that they don't, but they really do. I did a video on that the other day. But let me just pull that up for you again. XPT, there was a nice 
picture of the factory just to give people an idea just how beautiful and shiny and big that is let me see if we can find it can we well maybe when we're on a live it's always a bit tricky isn't it um i had a lovely picture of that here we go uh, this is is that no that's the back side of it um here it is that, that's it so open here we go here we go here we go this is the xpt factory it's enormous it's beautiful it's shiny and it makes the powertrains the battery components all the important stuff in neo so anybody who says neo doesn't make anything doesn't build anything well they are simply wrong and here is the um the, the battery technology uh, and you also have the the powertrain essentially the the engines here um you can see all these components these are all made 100 percent by Neo, so I think that's a really important one for people to realize uh, these guys actually design and build and engineer these components, and these components are then assembled by the joint venture. Um, and and yes, the joint venture also adds in you know fluffy seats and windows and that sort of thing. But that's not really where whether the value is. That's not really really where the tech is. The tech is in in this right. It's in the in the batteries. It's in the swapping technology. Uh, that's really uh, what we are looking at here in terms of value add. So um, uh, glad, glad to have you on the call here, Jonathan. Uh, hello to California, Ernesto. Okay, we just did that summary. Mary Grace, good to see you on the live chat. Uh, Atropos, new end of the week, $70. Well, let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, attachment points. Um, attachment points. Thank you, Frank. That is the word I was looking for. Uh, I caught them screws. They are attachment points. How will Neil be able to capture 40% of the market share by 2025 if there are current production capacities only around 100K? Well, they're building a second factory. Uh, the last one took him 360 days to build. So... I think from there are two sides to it. Neo is focusing on building these core components at XPT. Uh, I haven't been told that there is a, a sort of a constraint there on that side. Uh, for the assembly lines, they're basically outsourcing that, and um, it's it's up to that joint venture to basically put up factories and pay for it. And they're doing that. They're building the second one. So they're just going to ramp that up. You know, if, if they can get a factory off the ground from zero to production in, in 360 days, again, they have government support. They can get all the permits and get the land. They can get it done. And uh, they have a very, very competent partner there. I, I, I think they are going to catch up with that. But I do think at the moment we are near capacity uh, and that's a little bit of an issue. So we have to see how they're going to solve that. Can they put in extra shifts? Can they, how quickly can they ramp up the extra uh, factory there? So that's be something to watch out for, for sure in Q1 and Q2 numbers. And, uh, and also the next earnings call, guys. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you are on that live earnings call because we always are. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is the place to be, guys. Any update on the Swiss National Bank uh, NEO upgrade? So yeah, the Swiss National Bank is a shareholder of NEO that made headlines in some parts of the world. Um, NEO, Swiss National Bank invests in lots of things. Uh, and it, but yeah, it, it is, I think, a good sign that investing in NEO it sort of makes NEO a little bit more of a blue chip uh, than, uh, than it was before. So yes, I think that's a positive story. Um, obviously, the government decided the Chinese um, NEO is the way for Chinese EVs. Excellent news for NEO, says Atropos. Yeah, I think this is very, very good. Uh, will the factory be fully autonomous, says JD? You know what? I, I think car factories re still require people. There are certain things that are easier to do for robots, and there are certain things that are very hard to do for robots. Wiring, for example, is very hard to do for robots. It's very fiddly. It's very small. Um, and, and actually, people can probably do that cheaper. Uh, why? Because if the robot hit something, there's a snag, if it stops working, if it does something complicated, then the whole line stops. So you kind of want the robots to do the heavy lifting. You want them to do actually the easy tasks, like moving the whole car, turning it around, uh, putting on comp big components, moving stuff, lifting it up, all that kind of thing the robots are really good at. And people are not so good at because it's heavy and it's difficult to do. But the really small finicky stuff uh, actually People, I think, to some extent, are still, still more reliable. Although the Neo factory, I, I'm told, is uh, pretty much uh, as, as, as state of the art as it can get. Uh, Lee Bin, the uh, chairman, uh, sorry, CEO of Neo, said famously that uh, this is much, much better than the Porsche factory that he had toured a few years before. So that upset some Porsche drivers, I understand. Um, Frank, you, what is your opinion uh, of the Chinese people towards EVs from the US companies like GM and Ford? I mean, uh, you have GM, obviously, a huge, huge uh, car manufacturer in China. They, again, have a, have a joint venture here. Uh, and they are building EVs, but they are be building them under Chinese brands, right? 
So um, that is uh, kind of the way they're positioned there. They're, they're sort of not really, I think, seen as, um, let's look at uh, JAC, uh, sorry, S S I A C, right? Um, let me have a quick look at that, then I can, I can show you what we're talking about. Um, that, um, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, where is S A I C cars? Um, that they uh, don't hear S A I C motors. Um, they are not really, I think, seeing them so much as um, foreign companies because they are made locally. And you can see here a little bit Brand Hall, for example. What have you got on there? Okay, I've got MG. I've got, okay, I've got, I haven't got uh, that one up here. Uh, but you can see, you know, Briggs, Cadillac, Chevrolet. Um, there are quite a lot of brands and they are all built by SAIC in China in this sort of joint venture. So, yeah, they, they are kind of. Um, popular. I mean, they, they sell a lot of cars and I do think they will all sell quite a lot of EVs, but they're not getting the kind of attention that NIO is getting. It's a little bit like GM and Ford in the US are not getting that EV attention. Uh, GM starting to get a little bit, but they're not sort of seen as the kind of shiny Tesla. I think that's kind of where the distinction lies. It's kind of old world dinosaurs uh, versus the, 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 the new guys. Um, Cadillac, yeah, we, we're talking about that here. Here you go. Um, the... Um, Again, there's a factory in China together here with SAIC. Um, that was when they start doing that. 2006, the first, 2000 and... Yeah, I think 2006 was the first um, Cadillac in the Chinese market. And um, I understand they're selling quite well. So, uh, you know, GM is, is, is a big, big player here in China, uh, but it's a different model, right? They're doing it together with SAIC. Um, and uh, it is just sort of the old part of all these brands uh, that are in the market here. And uh, Volkswagen also with SAIC, but they have bought out uh, their, their joint venture partners pretty much. So um, what do you think of Sinovic as an investment? They have a nice dividend. All your thoughts are welcome. Yeah, they do have a nice and nice dividend. Um, and, and should I show you why? This is why. So um, it, it just hasn't performed as a stock. Uh, the obvious challenges there are you are a petroleum company. People are going to start using less petroleum. Yes, they have other businesses, etc. And they're a bigger refiner and that kind of thing. But uh, fundamentally, I think uh, it is a challenging business. If you buy it and hold it just for the for the dividend, 7.54%. Uh, there are quite a lot of these uh, state-owned monopolies with very juicy dividends. The telecoms are another one. Uh, so for pure dividend play, yeah, I think it's an, perhaps an interesting one. They're unlikely to go out of business. I mean, I, I would I would grant you that because it is government-owned. Uh, are they going to be a fantastic money earner? Are they going to triple your capital? I, I think that's very unlikely. Uh, they're going to sort of bob along. They're having a little bit of a better time of late uh, the last couple of months. But, you know, they have... Uh, come down a lot. Uh, Petro China, the other one we we're talking about here, you know, moving quite similarly. Again, not a super juicy sort of sexy company, but it is, it is of course, a fair play to go for things for dividends. Um, George here, what's the, the Apple, Apple rumors? Uh, well, Neo isn't going to make the Apple car. I don't think that's going to happen. I think if Apple does that, then I think they might do that in sort of three to five years. They are going to go to one of the uh, the big guys. That could be Geely, that could be Hyundai, that could be uh, some sort of Foxconn partnership um, who might make that for them. Neo says that is their real competitor, Apple. So they're basically saying we haven't got a competitor until Apple steps into the ring, which is a nice way of looking at it. Uh, why is he saying that? Well, because I think Lee Bin, uh, William Lee, he he borrows from the sort of Apple uh, playbook of taking technology and really making it help people and fix and solve a problem. He sees his car as a technology uh, product. He doesn't really see it as a car. And that's why they are making only the core new components. They're not focused on making the whole thing because they, they basically can outsource that and, and they, can, they can focus the R&D money on uh, the environment, the 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 software, the, the powertrain, the battery swapping technology, all that kind of juicy, exciting stuff. So uh, uh, do you think new earnings will exceed estimates, says Robert? It's a good one. I mean, I think there is a good chance that they might. Uh, 
it's certainly a very, very interesting uh, 1st of March. That's only two weeks away, guys. Make sure you set the reminder for that uh, live stream earnings call. I've already put it up so people have it in their diary because that is the most important day, surely, in 2021. So, guys, make sure you you uh, you find that uh, live on my channel and, and set that reminder. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's be interesting. I'll do some videos as we run up to that, Robert, with kind of what the estimates are, where we are at the moment, and, and what I think might happen. And then we'll talk about that. Do the Chinese like SAIC, like Australians love Holden? Now, Frank, I don't know how much Australians love Holden. Uh, the Chinese, um, I think they respect SAIC. SAIC in itself is not really a huge brand, I would say. It's that they manufacture brands. So people buy MGs, Rovers, you know, Volkswagen, Skodas, etc. And they're all made by SAIC, but it doesn't sort of say SAIC on the car. So it is a little bit more, um, I think, a... a a manufacturer, really, that just makes a lot of brands. So I think that's kind of the take on it. But the brands, I mean, they're, they're doing very well uh, overall, but and they have lots of EVs out as well, but they're not getting the attention because, of course, it's a massive company that builds 98% ICEs and it's only just sort of dipping their feet into EVs. Uh, but interestingly, you know who SAIC is partnering with for the operating system for all their, their EVs? Alibaba. So again, Alibaba has its fingers in absolutely everything. Um, do you have a price range for Neo 2025? Okay, we can talk about that too. David Potts, good questions. What are your thoughts on the fake Neo cars that JRC are making as shown by Mr. P? They look awful. They're not fake Neo cars. There is a Neo JAC joint venture and they make this uh, 007 car. Let me just see if I can pull that up. JAC and it's not a fake Neo. It is a joint venture. Um, let me see if I can hear it is uh, on Gasku. Uh, they're not sold under the Neo brand. Um, it is here. The Haikan 007 um, is is that it's branded separately. It's sold separately, separate distribution and all of that. And these are basically a I'd say a lower tier car, if you know what I mean. Um, not as sort of high end. And it is just a sort of side business, if you will. Now, Lee Bin stepped down from that as a, as a, as a, as a director uh, last week. I think he's distancing himself a little bit from it. One of the reasons is that these are not selling very well. I think that's really my, my view on it. They are um, still relatively ex expensive, but this is, so this is like the JAC's Neos NEV brand Hican. It's not sold on the Neo. It's not available through the Neo channels. It doesn't give you access to Neo house and all these kind of things. I think it was just sort of a, a another attempt to recycle the technology. And I do think going down the road, I don't think this is doing very, very well, but I think there will be another way of doing it. Um, you know, you can use Neo's engine from last year and you can put it into another brand made um, for, for another company and therefore you can get more value from their technology and they can sell those cars cheaper. They can still benefit from that technology that Neo's developed and Neo gets revenue from it. But I think this particular one hasn't done terribly well. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to it, really. Uh, we certainly know Lee Bin has sort of stepped out of the ring publicly. He doesn't seem to want to be associated with it. And that's fair enough. And you know what? I mean, look at look at uh, what um, Elon Musk was saying a, a couple of days ago. Basically, he, he, he sort of uh, loves failure. You need failure to succeed. So just because you are, you are attempting something that isn't working, it, it doesn't mean you've really gone wrong. It just means you attempted something and it didn't work. And there is sort of a 50-50 chance, I think, when you're setting up EV companies, either it works or it, or it won't work. Um, but yeah, this is sort of seen as a little brother to Neo, if you will, but it doesn't have the kind of design and pizzazz as, uh, as, as, as Neo certainly has. But yeah, uh, thanks for, for asking about that. It is a little bit confusing, so uh, it is good to understand where that's coming from. Um, uh, Gary there, one of our lovely members, uh, good morning to you. Um, it could be time to get in on a dip, uh, says Gary. All right, let's have a look at that. But new battery swap service is its main selling point, says Marlong Fan. Um, I think it's certainly one of the attractions, uh, but I do think actually rolling that out to other brands will make it better. You're going to have more battery swapping and Neo will get revenue from it. Let's have a quick look at the chart here. Where are we? Are we at a dip or not? Well, I think one pattern, uh, some of you might have seen me uh, highlight these last two days, is that we have this pattern here. So we are down three days. Let me make that red. So we're down three days. Previously, we were down three days and we went up. Here we were down three days. Here we were down four days and then a rally. 
And this was also three days down, three days down. You sort of see where I'm going with this? Three days down. And each time after we've done three, sometimes four days down, we had a rally up, we had a rally up. Okay, this one was not the greatest rally. It sort of hovered a little bit further down. So this one here is the exception. Uh, that was a nice little rally. This was a rally and this was a rally. And each time that happens, uh, and I think that's kind of an interesting one, it's, it's, it's related to volume. So down here you have the volume. The volume falls off, you get sell-off days. Volume falls off, you get sell-off days volume falls off again here, volume falls off again here, and the last three trading days, volume also falls off there. So I think volume actually a very, very good indicator here. Um, and, and I think it's interesting to see this pattern. So are we gonna see uh, on, on Tuesday one more day down, or is the market gonna digest events like this event here, Sinopec, and gonna give us the next rally? Well, I think it's sort of 50-50 between three and four days down, um, I, I would say, that leads us up to the next rally. Now, it can, of course, at times here, you have two days, but generally speaking, it's, it's a pretty good trend. I think it's a pretty good pattern we are seeing here. And we can look at a couple of, um, a couple of indicators here, just to give you guys a bit of a setup for the week. And as always, this is not financial advice, this is straight from the goat's mouth. Here's Baron von Goat at the Gentle Barn. So guys, smash that like button. I donate one cent to Baron the Goat and his buddies at the Gentle Barn for each like. Uh, now let me find my window again. Where did it go? Here we go. So if you look at RVI, which is Relative Volatility Index, you can basically see we having a decline here in, in, in the RVI. And um, when it does dip, uh, we do tend to see that sell-off. You know, it's at a very, very low point here. And that's, of course, also got to do with just lack of volume there, uh, which last time we were at that was a long, long time ago. You have to go back to sort of, uh, I think it's April last year. Um, that was, let me just show you guys here. Where was it? Yeah, April last year is the last time we were at such a, a low point. And what happened in April last year, well, obviously, is... Uh, very early days for our lovely rally. We were at uh, 260. <laughs> so um, I think it, it kind of means here that that to me, it, it could give us a boost in the in the near term um, if volumes and volatility does pick up again a little bit. Um, now let's look at uh, RSI. I, I like RSI if you follow my chart analysis. Uh, with RSI, always guys, put in the 50 point line. And then that basically tells you whether you have a buy or sell signal here. So let me get a different color. Um, the last buy signal we had was on the 28th or so of December. That here was the last buy signal when it crossed the 50 point line ever since we've been in hold land. Hold and hold and hold. Let me just show you that magnified here. That was the last buy signal we had. And we haven't had a sell off signal and we haven't got one yet. We are still way above the 50 point line. So to me, that's a positive. That goes to show there's pretty strong momentum in this. And uh, again, we can look at a couple of others here. Williams are, again, momentum. Uh, so again, there's a 50 point line here in the middle of the dotted line. Uh, that gave us a buy signal on the 8th of February. And that was at $56. It hasn't given us a sell-off signal yet. Now, are we going to see that go down? Well, at the moment, this here is flattening out. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys if you are on a small screen. It, it is, obviously, the momentum is coming out of it. Well, we had three days of sell-off, so that kind of makes sense. But it is flattening off here at the end, again, because sell-off volumes is flattening off. And we haven't got a sell-off signal yet from my point of view. We haven't crossed that 50-point line. So again, to me, that says hold. Uh, let's look at one more. Uh, let's look at the um, MACD, MACD. Uh, and where are we with that? Well, that actually gave us a sell indicator um, just here on the 26th of January, which is when we were at uh, 60 bucks. And, and that was obviously, it, it's a resistance point, right? $60. And what's been happening ever since? Well... The, you can see these red bars here. So that's the strength of the sell-off and momentum. That's been flattening off. And then the last two days is getting a little bit bigger, but it's still very, very, very small. And we haven't got a buy signal thing from MACD. Now, MACD also lags a little bit. So it tends to be a little bit behind, uh, but it's very, very close to the indicator line here. Um, so to me, that sort of says, ah, this isn't really a very strong one. I wouldn't certainly act on that, uh, but it isn't telling us buy. But if you have it already, it also isn't telling you to, to sell out. So 
a quick, quick uh, one there. Let's look at some more comments here. Uh, Chris has been holding Neo since $7. Can't seem to break away from the $60 range. I think, yeah, that is kind of this strong resistance here. But just look at uh, the, um, the, the trend. I mean, you know, we have this. This is wh where we're going. And that's, that's a pretty strong rally. And if you, if you extend that out a little bit, then uh, you do actually get to uh, really quite nice numbers. I mean, I think we already are, you know, you get to sort of $70 by, by March if we are continuing on, on, on this particular trajectory. Now, I do think the trajectory will continue to do this kind of thing because it is a, it is a growth stock and it does do that. And therefore, every time it goes down, we get new support levels. So when it does dip, A, it's an opportunity and it also gives you a, a, a new support. So the next dip won't be as severe as possibly the last one. So as always, guys, not financial advice, just entertaining here, straight out of the goat's mouth. There are always lots of goats in my videos. Sorry, guys, you have to deal with the goats and hit that like button. And I keep donating to my goat buddies. Um, what was that quote coming here? I'm a financial advisor and trust me when I say that even though you are not a one, uh, you should know what you're talking about. Um, I, I very much appreciate that, but I, I'm most certainly not a financial advisor or anything of the sort, but very kind of you to say that as I caught. Um, happy Chinese New Year to you, everyone. Absolutely everyone, Gary. It's a beautiful, beautiful start of the year here. And Sinopac is giving us a beautiful Neo Day, hopefully. Um, Bob, I expect a top of 120 this year unless Neo can top 300,000 vehicles. I don't think they're going to top 300,000 vehicles this year, Bob. I think actually they have a capacity constraint there. I think uh, 100,000, I think is realistic. I think 150,000 is a little bit, uh, it, it, it will be the top of the range. William Lee has mentioned 150,000, but he is a man who tends to exaggerate a little bit, right? He also told us we'd have 600 battery swap stations by December and we had about 100. And I'm not dissing him for that. I mean, there, there are reasons for it, but he is a little bit one to exaggerate. So if we get to 100,000 vehicles this year, I would be very happy. And I think the stock should be very happy. Uh, and then perhaps the year after, we might be seeing 200,000 plus uh, as they're ramping up capacity also. Um, Artemis, why do sell-offs lower the stock's value? Well, it's, it's, it's pure uh, pure economics. It's, buy, it's, it's, it's supply and demand. Uh, when less people demand the stock and there isn't less supply, in fact, they're, print, well, they're essentially printing more stocks, right? We have been diluting. Um, it simply means less people are willing to pay for it and therefore less people bid it up. Uh, this might be a fruitful year for everyone in the FF community, says Gary Lau. Yes, prosperity to everyone and lots of goats to GMO there. Wonderful. Matt, you think everyone is putting out of Neo and going all in on Lucid? People are putting money into Lucid, absolutely, and we can pull that up, um, but it isn't quite the same um, same story. And I mean, there is so much. Um, uh, what's the uh, what's this back? Uh, CCIV. Um, there is so much money floating about that. Um, here we go. There's on a percentage basis. Let me hide my squiggles, and you can see it better. So this is what's happening with CCIV. They are going to the moon up 300% or so since uh, beginning of January. Um, let me also pull that up in uh, just in, in, in Google. Um, there we go. Stock. Where is it? There we go. Um, it, it, it is a very interesting story. I mean, it's certainly one that can fascinate. What's the market cap now? 10 billion. Okay. Neo is, uh, is, what is it? 80 billion or something like that at the moment. What's Neo's market cap? Does it tell us on here? Uh, 77 billion at the moment. So uh, you have to kind of a little bit put it into perspective in terms of amount of money that has actually gone in there. Uh, that's just one day, guys. Um, year to date, is, I guess, the more sensible chart. Um, it is uh, valued now at four times the $2 billion that's in there, right? So there's $2 billion in cash in there. And they are assuming that if they can get their hands on Lucid, if the Saudis are willing to give them a steel deal. And that's a little bit what I'm struggling with on this is how do you get to four times valuation? Because the Saudis, who are strong in Lucid, put a billion dollars into that. They are one of the strongest long-term investors out there. They tend to buy and hold. So maybe they aren't selling. Maybe there are other people who are selling. Perhaps that's the theory. And then uh, perhaps they can leverage it and that way make more money out of the leverage. I mean, that's the only thing because you are simply acquiring something. You haven't changed it and it's gone up four times in value. Um, unless you think the guys selling are, are a little bit um, dim and giving it to you at a quarter of the price. So that's a little bit the challenge with these SPACs when they acquire things. Yes, they're acquiring a business and therefore there is growth potential. It isn't just cash. But four times 
price is, um, you know, very few merger and acquisitions lead the company buying that company to quadruple in value, uh, even over a year or two or three. So that's a little bit the challenge I think I have with that valuation. So it's obviously a lot of momentum in there and, and, and that's fair enough, but it's very much a momentum play. Um, especially is $60 a good dip or should I wait for a bigger dip? You know, I, I can't give you direct financial advice. Should I buy this? Should I buy that? Should I do it now? Should I do it then? Um, I, I think from what we are seeing from the pattern here, and let me put my little patterns in again, um, we tend to have this three, sometimes four day sell off, and then we have a bit of a rally and it then continues. Um, at the moment, volumes are so very low. So uh, a rally at this volume wouldn't be a big rally. That would be my take on it. And also a sell off at this volume wouldn't be a big sell off because simply uh, no one's trading. And if no one's trading, then uh, stocks don't move very much. Um, Frank says, Neo at 80 makes Neo the most second value car company in the world. Do you think Tesla is worth less than Neo? Uh, says Frank, I mean, Neo is valued higher than Tesla at the, at the moment. And I, I call that the, um, the Tesla bonus because Tesla is showing the way that a successful EV company can go and where revenue can come from, and autonomous driving and all that stuff and how it can get be valued. Because Tesla has done that, Neo is able to be uh, valued at these rather high levels. Let me add uh, Tesla here onto the chart and you can uh, perhaps see what I'm talking about. Agree or disagree with me. Uh, there is a very strong correlation between the two and it isn't Neo moving Tesla. It's quite the other way around. Tesla moves Neo. So when you get, um, I I'm going to draw some more squiggles guys. You get, you see this rally here, right? That was that rally there. Then Tesla sold off, Neo sells off, Tesla recovers, Neo recovers. Tesla does this dip, we get a sell off with Neo. Uh, Tesla recovers, we get a recovery with Neo. And then again, Tesla sells off, goes a little bit horizontally, uh, Neo sells off at very low volume. So uh, Tesla still very much makes the market for Neo. Why is Neo exciting to people? Well, for once, there are very, very few pure, pure EV plays out there. There is a huge amount of cash sloshing about. The government is printing it like uh, it's going out of business. And where does that money go? It doesn't go to the real economy. It goes straight into asset managers' uh, funds and into investors' funds. They leverage it and they invest it into things that might give them a return. And NEO is one of those exciting plays because it's a pure EV play. They're making good quality cars, big Chinese support, uh, the premium EV brand in China um, that has a lot of traction and it it's 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 basically it's it's a shiny it's a shiny business uh it's a pure ev business that does a lot of high tech the battery swapping all that kind of thing so therefore money pours into it and more money than would ordinarily pour into it if tesla hadn't been around if you look at a historic tesla chart the chart you know tesla didn't do a great deal for quite a long period of time and people forget that um look at maximum here right what happened between 2010 and 2012 well, we went from four dollars to five thirty. From two thousand twelve to two thousand fifteen, we went from five thirty to thirty dollars. Okay, that's pretty good. But you know, it wasn't the kind of skyrocketing thing we're seeing here. And basically, Neo is skipping all of this, and uh, so basically, all of this stuff here that the hard work that Tesla did here. Uh, perhaps even up to here, Neo doesn't have to do this part. Neo is just jumping in right here. And, uh, and enjoying the, 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 the fruits of Tesla's labor, essentially. And, and that's why I think it is valued the way it's valued. Without Tesla, Neo's stock price would be a fraction. Uh, I, I, I'm sure of that. And listen to, you know, uh, the CEO of, of uh, Neo, Lieben, he got that interview the other day and he says, uh, Neo is a toddler and it's being paid the salary uh, post uh, doctorate degree. And, and that's how he sees it. He basically says we have to catch up with the valuation. We are the very, very beginning stages of the business. And I like how humble he is there. And it also goes to show how much opportunity there is. But a lot of that is, of course, priced in. So um, I, I totally get your point there, Frank. Thank you very much. Um, and, and of course, how do you compare this to Toyota or Volkswagen or these kind of companies in terms of... Um, if you look at the valuation per car sold or something like that, yeah, you're not you're not going to get anywhere. You're you're going to going to um, run away from the EVs. Um, you simply are 
not going to uh, like it if that's the way you look at it. Uh, that tends to be the thing when you get one of these booms, think dot com boom, for example. And yes, that did end in a burst, but 50% of those companies went bust. 50% of those companies are still there and are doing fantastically. And you just have to kind of bet which one is this going to be. Is this a, a Netscape or is it a Facebook, right? That, that's kind of, I think, um, what we have to decide for ourselves, whether this is a long-term winner or, or, or not. Now, the Chinese government support for me is a bit of a hedge here. There is somewhat underwritten these uh, Chinese EV companies by the government. We've seen that Neo, Neo went insolvent in March last year. They ran out of money. And what happened? Well, the government bailed them out. And we also see that, you know, with Li and X-Bank, they're getting loans from state-run banks, Bank of China, etc. So there is that, there is that support there. And I think it was fair enough that they bailed them out because one of the reasons they got bailed out was that, uh, well, COVID happened, right? No one was buying cars for an extended period of time. And when you are a new company like that with tight cash flow, then not having any sales essentially for four months, uh, well, it, 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 knocks you, it knocks you over. So they saved them and the government made a little money out of the bailout. They're reinvesting that bailout money into an industrial park, an EV industrial park and research park around NEO. So NEO benefits here twice. And... Um, that whole uh, dilution thing, I think, is massively overblown. If you want to check out my video on that, basically, uh, we own 97.5% of NEO. Uh, the government owns very, very little uh, because actually most of the value in NEO is in XPT, this company here. Uh, where is that lovely? Um, have I still got um, here? This lovely factory, XPT, that is basically. 70% of the value of NEO and people just don't seem to talk about it. I don't know why, but this is where all the money is because these guys make the powertrains, the battery components, all the important stuff in, in the NEO car. So um, let's take some more questions here. What article I've seen, um, Agro China owns 73% of graphite deposits for those chips. They're trying to design and manufacture their own chips. Um, I, I don't know the details, Tim, there of NEO doing that. There is a huge program in China to basically become self-sufficient for uh, semiconductors because the US is cutting off China for semiconductors. And some of the really high-end ones, some of the really small ones, some of the really fast ones are still being made in the United States. And basically, Chinese government has been telling everybody from Alibaba to Tencent to absolutely anyone who's anyone in China to basically get on to the chip making thing, put your cleverest R&D people on it and let's get self-sufficient. So if NEO is doing that, I wouldn't be surprised because again, there's a big, big push here in China to be self-sufficient on that. And um, at the moment, of course, they work with, with companies like NVIDIA, et cetera, uh, for, uh, for a, a lot of that. But I wouldn't be surprised if they start doing that. But uh, thanks, Tim. I'll have a look and see if I can find some sources for that. Um, Tesla is a safer stock than NEO, says Thomas. Look, Tesla is the number one uh, EV stock in the world. If you are essentially looking for a one stock ETF for, for, for uh, the EV sector, I would also be looking at Tesla. They are the guys who are ahead. They're making a half a million cars. Neo isn't. They're making, you know, 40 odd thousand a year at the moment, although that will uh, go to, I think, more than 100,000 this year. So they're catching up quite quickly. But yes, they are not Tesla. And Tesla also has its fingers in a lot of other things that are quite interesting and, and, and potential future businesses. I, I'm a big Tesla fan. So if your, your view is I'm going to buy just one EV stock, then uh, I, I would think it'd be a fair view to simply just buy Tesla and leave it at that. Um, uh, Thomas says, uh, Musk is a leader of the future, more to come. Yes, I think he might be a leader of Mars too. The man is sort of not really human. Uh, he, he, he is uh, certainly an incredibly um, smart individual. Uh, Gary says it's Apple versus Xiaomi. Uh, okay, so how you see sort of Apple is Tesla and Xiaomi is, is Neo. Interesting. Uh, uh, thank you, Gary. Um, Thomas has made lots of money out of Tesla. Excellent. Congratulations. Uh, Gary Jobs versus, versus uh, Lei Jun. Okay. Uh, Thomas, I bought a small position in Neo. Thanks for sharing. Tim, I agree with you, uh, Thomas. Let's see what happens. Both are solid choices. Buying Neo now is like buying Tesla when it was worth $80. Is Tim's view on that? Uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, Tim wants Tesla to do a split. I'm a small shareholder of Neo. I appreciate your videos, but we're holding until at least 350. Okay, I appreciate that, uh, Artemius. Um, I mean, I, I tend to buy things and hold them for a long time. That's what I prefer to do, unless some things are really event-driven. Sometimes they are uh, sort of event-driven opportunities to make money. 
Um, the companies are different, but yes, my comparison is accurate, uh, says Tim. Okay, uh, thank you very much there. Winston Maxi, good morning. Good to see you on the live, Stefanos. We can agree to disagree, uh, says Tim. I think, I think that's kind of the beauty, I think, of, of I love our little community here that we are uh, all quite civil and we agree and we disagree and it's all fine. And I, I love it when people disagree with me. People post things in the comments sometimes and they say, I think you're utterly wrong. And I really appreciate that because it just sort of widens our horizon. It opens my mind to something else and then I dig into it and I might at the end just start to agree with the person who was disagreeing with me. So I think uh, rather than just sort of pumping, pumping, pumping stocks, I mean, you, you know, I'm, I'm pretty positive on the EV sector for sure, but I think we do need to look at uh, facts and, and, and resources when things happen and not just sort of shout to the moon all the time. Although, of course, when it does go to the moon, it's lovely. But uh, let's let's keep in mind what the underlying, what the fundamental business is here. And um, Stefanos there says, Nia is more like Apple. I think, yeah, that is basically the comparison that uh, Lee Bin, uh, William Lee, is, is inviting. He wants to be more of an Apple, uh, more of a software tech company rather than a company that puts four wheels on something. He's happy to outsource that. Um, JD, talking about Neo houses, we can certainly talk about that for a little bit. So they've been getting quite a lot of flack and quite a lot of sort of value investors who are, who are um, using it as an opportunity to hit Neo over the head with it. And I totally get as from a value investor point of view. I also buy a lot of value stocks and um, Neo doesn't look appealing because it simply doesn't have the revenue, the cash flow that you would need for a value stock. Generally, you want a value stock to have been around for 10, 20, 30, 50 years, maybe longer, and be a, a sort of consumer staple, people, something people have to buy every single day or subscription of some sort or, you know, Facebook with the advertising, that sort of dominant position, big moat. Uh, a new company, a startup, never has that. A growth stock never has that. So what, what's the criticism thrown at new houses? They're saying they're incredibly expensive. They're basically like Apple flagship stores. They're in the greatest, best locations in expensive malls at uh, sort of the big junctures in major cities across China. And therefore rents are high. And people are sort of thinking that these are just kind of um, lounges. And you go, once you're a new customer, you just go in there, you hang out and you have a cup of coffee. That isn't really the case. There are showrooms, there are sales rooms, all the staff and there are sales staff. We were looking at the Norway hiring for Neo House Oslo. And who are they hiring? Well, they are all talking about salespeople. And they're saying, the manager of Neo House, you will support the sales team, help them convert guests to customers. That's the language. So they are showrooms. And it's basically Neo's branding investment and sales showroom investment to position themselves as a top end brand. And that's because they want to be seen as an Apple, as a, as a, as a premium tech company. Uh, rather than having a showroom in some sort of suburb somewhere near, um, you know, a Toyota dealership. That's not the way they want to go. And they're doing it very much on purpose. And some people might think that's a waste of money. Um, I mean, marketing spend comes in different forms, right? In, in the past, you would have put money on uh, TV adverts and magazine adverts and these kind of things. And that's a little bit out, out now. And Flagship stores are very much the way to go. You see that in high, high fashion. Most flagship stores lose money. And, um, you know, if you walk down, I don't know, Fifth Avenue in New York or something, a lot of those flagship stores are losing money. They are just too big. They're just paying too much rent. But the brands think this is worth it. I want to be positioned here next to the big guys. And that's why I'm going to sell more online. I'm going to sell more in, in, in other places, in other smaller showrooms. And bear in mind, Neo sells get 65% of their sales from referrals, existing customers referring uh, new customers. So they are taking them to the Neo house as a guest. They get to enjoy the lavish environment and they get sold and talked to by the Neo staff there who are basically showing them the Neo cars and they walk out and they've bought a Neo and that's basically the concept. So uh, it's an investment. It's one that you might agree with or disagree with, but I think that's basically the, the purpose. They are not just lounges. They are showrooms. They are sales places. So um, what other stock can we buy that is connected to Neo? says Mark Fullerton. Well, uh, CATL, uh, they make all the batteries. That would be the, uh, probably the most obvious one. Batteries are the biggest cost component of, uh, of, of an EV. So uh, there is a lot of money in that. Um, Apple Neo partnership in China. Um, I, I don't see it, I must say. I think they are going to be too close a competitor for that to happen. GM plus Burma Shell. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about there, Roger. I appreciate the comment. I, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Bob, Millennium seems to really like the whole EV market and Neo has their eye. 
yeah, I, I think you know EVs are just the new the new car. I think it's coming sooner or later in 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 China sooner because the government push is very strong in the U.S. a little bit later, but then you know it's still a big market, of course. But the adoption there is a little bit slower. Um, Frank Hughes, is there any significant revenue expected from neo, neo uh, like clothing, food, etc.? See. It's an interesting one, Frank. I've been write, writing that off as a marketing expense. If you look at the, um, you know, the Scottish uh, core investors in NEO, uh, the Scottish um, mortgage pension funds who have been in NEO since before IPO and are still one of the biggest shareholders, they put, what was the value they put on it? I want to say 40 billion US dollars, um, or was it 400 billion renminbi, I can't quite remember the figure, but they put an astonishingly large value on that lifestyle business. So they do actually believe they're going to make money out of that. And that's an interesting one. I, 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 in my kind of numbers, I still don't really look at it like that. I don't look at it as a moneymaker, but it might be an interesting surprise. And it's something we should look out for on the 1st of March in that earnings call, guys. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you have that alert on because we are doing a live. We're going to join that live earnings call. We're going to listen into what the analyst questions are, what Neo's going to say. We're going to see live the PowerPoint presentation from Neo. Um, so make sure you are with us on that. Stefano says new houses can be pretty dynamic in terms of what they offer. Tons of revenue sources. Neo is aware of the potential, but it's too early at the moment. Appreciate that, Stefano. Um, I mean, there are to me there are showrooms, there are sales rooms. So for me, that's where the revenue comes from. Uh, you can sell people more, I suppose, in that. But I think at the moment the it's also this, the, the, the sort of Chinese consumer psyche. The whole VIP treatment thing, VIP lounges, is a really big one here. If when you launch a product, you basically set up a sort of salon, a kind of lounge, and then you get in some people who are influential. They bring in their friends. They experience your, your vibe, your brand, and then they buy in. And it's very much a recommendation kind of a basis. Uh, people like to buy what their um, successful friends are buying. So I, I think that's kind of where they're trying to tap in here. And, and it does seem to be working. Uh, Artemis there can revision uh, Neo as a premium brand like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Pepsi, etc. Interesting, you throw Pepsi into the mix there. I wouldn't have linked Pepsi with Amazon and Apple and Facebook, but I appreciate your, your thoughts. Uh, JD, I was also curious about their e-commerce. Do you know if they're going to expand this into a more electric product, e eclectic products rather, or know where their plans are for this service? Um, well, you have the new app, which is rather fantastic, which we're looking at here earlier. Let me see, that's still up here, it is. Uh, and, and in that, if you are a Neo customer, which I'm sadly not, because Neos are not available in Hong Kong yet, um, you can buy things, I understand. You get points. Purely for driving your Neo, you get essentially carbon credits, issued by NEO in the form of NEO points, which you can use to buy things, whether that's charging or whether that's lifestyle items from NEO. So I can see that expanding. Uh, I could see a, a NEO uh, shop on, on you know, Alibaba and Tmall and JD and these kind of places. And, and if you just look on the, I don't know about last time you guys looked on the NEO website, uh, it is quite interesting just how much they are NEO life. It's a whole sec segment on here. And this is obviously the international website. Uh, and they're just showing you like what they're doing. They're working on all sorts of stuff every day, household items, really cool design, really. They really are just, you know, winning design awards in, in, in Germany, IF there. Um, you know, clothing, absolutely everything. Food lab, there are food products that Neo is, is putting out. Uh, and, and really just tons and tons of good looking, designed, well-designed, smart, clever, healthy, uh, premium stuff. And I think that's just kind of them establishing themselves and also borrowing from famous designers, other famous brands. So they're doing these kind of, um, you know, joint ventures with international designers, Chinese designers. And I think it's rather clever. I, I don't think it costs them a great deal. And I think it might actually be a, a, a big business down the road, potentially. You know, perhaps that's a, a big revenue stream of the future. But at the moment, I think it's a little bit wait and see there. Um, uh, Raja, I can't make a perpetual distribution. Okay, thank you. I have a feeling Kathy Wood will add Neo to her portfolio any day after making a positive comment this week. Well, you saw what happened to Ping and Health uh, after um, Kathy bought an extra 500,000 shares, right? It jumped 20% on, uh, on Thursday here. Please send a link to Kathy mentioning Neo in this chat and let's ask FF to analyze. Um, I, will, I will gladly cover that, guys. I will also look at that and um, I'll write that down. Uh, good ideas go down on the um, on the notepad pad. <laughs> so thanks, guys, for those comments. Um, 
so let's do a really quick recap here for anyone who's joined us late. Basically, we have here on the Neo app, this is live from my phone. I'm streaming this from my phone so you guys can see it onto the computer. Uh, you have the chairman of Sinopec meeting the CEO and co-founder of Neo here, Lee Bin, the man with the goatee. Um, we're always talking about goats and they are inspecting a new battery swapping station. And where is it? Well, it's right next to a Sinopec station. You can see the red roof there in the background. If you are in China, you recognize that Sinopec. And who's China's Sinopec? Well, Sinopec has 27,000 petrol stations and they have all the premium petrol stations, basically. Um, China has a monopoly of petrol stations. They are the coastal areas, well, not just the coast, but you know, this area here on the right, the kind of lighter area, that's Sinopec, and then you have PetroChina inland. As these Sinopec areas are uh, the more affluent overall. So, you know, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing, etc. That's all Sinopec. Hong Kong is also Sinopec. And 27,000 petrol stations. And they are thinking, well, what are we going to do when petrol basically stops? Because uh, there are rumors that petrol will basically be banned by 2030 in China. I think that's perhaps a little bit early, but that's definitely the, the way we're heading. And Sinopec is going is partnering here with NEO, putting battery swap stations in there. They are also rolling out a charging network. And that is a massive boost for uh, NEO, for the EV sector. And... Really, it solves NEO's problem. NEO promised a 600 battery swap stations last year. They delivered 110 or so. And why is that? Well, it's just difficult to get the real estate. It's difficult to get the permits from all the local authorities. They said you have to talk to five different people in five different government agencies. And you have to get the power in. It, 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 it's a headache for them. Sinopec can do it like that. They are state owned. They own the land. They own the real estate. If they want power, they want permits. They're getting them because they're Sinopec. It's the, uh, the largest refinery. Um, oil um, refinery in, uh, in in Asia, massive, massive, massive company. And um, here he is. This is the, the chairman of, uh, of Sinopec there. And just to give you a little bit of a feel, they are the world's largest oil refining gas and petrochemical conglomerate uh, headquartered in Beijing. So it's a massive, massive company. And this is very much the way things are done in, in China, that when you have new technology, you get the new technology and the old world technology to work together. Everybody benefits. So here there, the state is putting together Neo and Sinopec and everybody wins, basically. So I think that's a very, very positive story. Uh, we also touched on how Neo and Xpang and Li are working together. Li Auto uh, is an early investor into Neo and Neo and Xpang met at the end of last year. And Xpang are saying they're looking forward to buying Neo components powertrain, batteries, um, engine, all the key stuff that is built by um, XPT. And who's XPT? XPT is the 100% NEO-owned factory here. This is the beautiful, shiny XPT factory. So people tell you that NEO doesn't make anything. Well, they are wrong. They make all the core components, the powertrain, the, uh, the batteries, all that stuff. That's really, really the stuff that matters, the engines. Uh, here you can see it all on, on, on the XPT website. And then that gets moved into the joint venture factory who are simply assembler. They add some fluffy chairs, some windows and a roof, which quite frankly isn't really where the technology is. That's not where the IP is. And XPT is, is something like 70% of the value of NEO. I think that's something important to, to bear in mind. And I do believe they're going to start supplying X, Xpeng with this because Xpeng is at the most, this point still a hybrid essentially. And the permits, the licenses for hybrids will essentially be phased out shortly. So only pure EV cars will get licenses to be to get license plates essentially in, in most Chinese cities. So uh, Xpeng has to move to a full full EV model there. And I believe they're going to do that with new technology. And, and that, that's kind of the model. The model here is that these three companies support each other, government support behind it, and, and everybody wins. Um, well, Tesla is kind of the odd one out. And, you know, there is, a, there is a Chinese standard for charging stations, right? That plug is standardized. The only company not using that standard is Tesla. And I think that shows you a little bit this, um, how strong that the, uh, these Chinese companies are banding together with the government support. Um, Right, lots more questions here. Let's run through them, guys. Um, what is Sinopec's market share? Well, they, they have 27,000 petrol stations. In this lighter colored area, all petrol stations are Sinopec. Right, that's how it works. In the blue area, all petrol stations are PetroChina. Uh, there's nobody else. So uh, Sinopec has basically 100% market share <laughs> in, in pretty much everywhere that matters in China. There are, there, okay, there are a couple of bigger cities that are not in this, like Chengdu, for example. 
uh, where all of cars are manufactured. But, you know, all the really major cities are in here, all the high highest earning provinces, uh, the biggest GDP uh, per capita provinces are all in Sinopec's area. So Sinopec is the guy you want to partner with if you want to build EV charging. Um, so is it confirmed? Well, look at this one here, right? You have, this is Sinopec's chairman. Here he's shaking hands with William Lee. This is yesterday, guys. You see the, the, the this is the battery uh, swapping station of uh, NEO. And you can see here the chairman. You see that little background there, a little bit of red and white there. That is the Sinopec logo. That's the Sinopec station. Here, that red roof there in the background, uh, that is um, Sinopec's petrol station. The chap here in the woolly hat is uh, William Lee, the uh, CEO of NEO. And here again, here you get a clear view of Sinopec. Apologies, guys, it's a little bit small. It's as big as I can make it because it, it, comes, from, uh, it comes from my phone screen uh, and I'm just putting it on the computer here. Uh, and here they are, they're shaking hands. So that is, is that, why are they inspecting a battery service station on Sinopec land? Well, because they are cooperating on this. That's my take on this. Uh, we haven't had an official announcement. I, I should put that out there. Uh, they haven't told us that, but uh, this is basically, Neo is putting this out on their app to let their users know and let the world no. So to me, that is a very, very positive story. Um, uh, okay, Frank doesn't, 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 doesn't think the uh, the neo houses are a, a good way to go. Fair enough. Well, they're, they're putting one up in Oslo in, in Europe as well. So we're going to get a European perspective from this uh, this year as well. That'd be interesting uh, to see what the Norwegians make of it. Uh, Nissan's ended their talk with Apple. Well, I think Apple seems to be talking to everyone, absolutely everyone. And um, I do think these big, big car manufacturers will find it difficult to work with Apple because Apple's philosophy is completely different to that of a Toyota, Hyundai, Nissan. Uh, and therefore, I'm thinking they are more likely to go to partner with somebody like Foxconn or Geely, who are used to servicing other brands. Their business model is that. So I think they are likely to end up in China um, with, with the Apple cars. And JD, yes, Neo will be the supplier for electric cars. That is the plan. XPT has been saying that for some time. Uh, let me show you again also that article here on XPT. Um, XPT here, visited by Xpeng Motors. They put this out in November. And the, the chairman of Xpeng Motors here, He Xiaopeng, he visited them. And what does he say? He says, co-founder of Xpeng Motors, he spoke highly of XPT EDS products and expressed his anticipation for the future in-depth cooperation between the two sides on the electric power platform. So he basically wants to get his hands on NEO's core product, which is, you know, the this stuff here, the engines, right? The, that core a powertrain that they're making um, and, and, you know, all that technology that they're making, all the little components that they're making. And I think they might also want to get their hands on the battery swapping stations because if there are more swapping stations and there are Sinopec stations, then, well, it makes a lot of sense for more than one brand to use them uh, and, and everybody wins, everybody makes money and China moves closer to their plan of um, EV dominance in the world with, with Chinese brands, which is where we are, where we are going. So, uh, Thomas, uh, retail investors individually won't move NEO large institutions retirements, et cetera, that will, and it seems like they're all betting NEO will go up. Well, we're seeing a lot of institutions going in there, absolutely, um, you know, last numbers. And now, again, I'll keep an eye on that, guys. I'll keep an eye on the, on the uh, 13F filings always. So make sure you subscribe to our lovely channel and community. We're always covering new and news here first. Frank says the Oslo location must have a sauna. I'm, I'm sure there's been a sauna in there. Uh, I, I, I don't know about that. But yeah, that, that, that'll be fun. I mean, Norway is the leader really in EV adoption around the world. It's only in, 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 in the sort of Western world. So that'd be really, really interesting. And I'm very excited about all the hiring they're doing there. And I'm excited they're building battery swap stations there. Also, neo houses, the whole thing. They're not going in with sort of a half effort. They are really going all in. And I think that's super important for, for the NEO stock. Uh, an $80 price would make NEO the lar third largest uh, automaker, says Thomas there. I think Thomas is trying to pull us back down to earth. And absolutely, I mean, valuations are... Um, I actually think that traditional car manufacturers are incredibly cheap. If you look at, uh, look at something like uh, here, not Fintel, Finbox, um, and... 
okay, look at Tesla. Uh, okay, these are not really my, okay, we do a quick compare. Uh, we're gonna take out Amazon and Apple. Uh, let's add a couple of more in here for good measure. Let's add BMW in there. Uh, let's add Volkswagen in there. Uh, which one do we want? Do we want the German one, Volkswagen F. Here we go, that's the one we want. And um, just have a look here. Okay, this is price to book. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. We're gonna live with, should we do price, price earnings? I think most people are more familiar with price earnings. PE ratio, here we go. So we just look at this and look at, so to the right here is revenue, right? So it kind of gives you an indication of size. PE is on the uh, the Y axis here up top. Uh, Tesla up there with a PE ratio of 1,100. And then everybody down here, right? All these little ones. Now I should also add Neo to this, shouldn't I? Uh, to make this more interesting for everybody. Now it's loading, 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 loading. Um, but we can look at while that is loading. Here we go. So Neo is down here with a with a it's a negative PE ratio. Well, they haven't made a profit yet. They might this year. I think there's a good chance. Market cap is 93 billion. Uh, Tesla is 783 billion. Uh, BMW is 55 billion. I can also show you that on this chart. It might be easier for you guys to see. Uh, let's sort it by PE ratio and you can get a feel for um, valuations. GM trades at 12 times PE. BMW at 13 times P, Honda 13, Toyota 16, Volkswagen 21. They've had a bit of a rally. They're doing very well with the EVs. They're selling about 100,000 or so. And then there's Tesla up there. And market cap, and that's perhaps another interesting one here. Let's just sort that by size also. Ford, 45 billion. Honda, 49 billion. BMW, 55 billion. GM, 77 billion. And Neo, 93 billion, according to this. Uh, I thought it was a little bit lower, actually, but okay. Volkswagen, 100 billion. So, of course, there's no link here to revenue, right? I mean, if you look at look at this here, price over last 12 months sales. Neo is valued at 48 times last 12 months sales. Tesla at 24 times last 12 months sales. Well, there are different stages of sort of rolling out. And then everybody else in the auto sector is at sort of 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Toyota actually the most expensive there out of the lot. So very, very hard to compare the two, uh, the EVs and the ICEs. And one of the things is that the ICEs have to gain through a lot of pain, to go through a lot of pain to get to EV stage because like every time Volkswagen sells a new EV, yeah, that's wonderful, that's shiny. But it means they didn't sell an ICE, they would have otherwise sold. The ICE has a higher margin for Volkswagen because they make so many of them and the EV has a lower margin. So each time they do that, they actually are worsening their margins just to survive. So that's kind of, I think, why investor money isn't flowing into these. And then you obviously also have these sort of moribund companies like Ford who are just, um, you know, sinking in debt. Uh, and they have been for, for decades. And they're basically around because governments keep bailing them out a little bit like, you know, Airbus and Boeing and those kind of companies. So it, it, it is a challenging one. I, I totally get where you're coming from. If you're coming from a, from a value point of view, um, you know, have a look at companies like GM, have a look at companies like BMW, Volkswagen. Um, I do think they're going to survive. I do think they're going to be around. I think they are making or are going to make good EVs, uh, but it is going to be a, a much longer play. Um, lots more guys here. Opcha, another one of our members, uh, welcome to the chat. Uh, you expect other Chinese cars manufacturers to utilize Neo swap stations? I do. Yes, I do. And I think, think specifically Xpang and Li will. I think those three are basically uh, banded together in a sort of brotherhood. Li is one of the earliest investors into uh, Neo. Uh, he put $15 million into that. Uh, Li Bin, uh, William Li, the, the founder of Neo, asked Mr. Lee from Lee Auto, too many Lees here, to actually become a co-founder of NEO. And uh, the Lee Auto Lee said, no, thank you very much. I think our, our vision is too different because Lee is kind of a cost-cutting guy, right? He's like, let's put things out as cheaply as possible, as quickly as possible. Lee is, is basically profitable. And NEO has a different, more sort of an Apple type philosophy. And therefore Lee the auto Lee, <laughs> Lee, auto Lee uh, said, no, I'm not going to be a co-founder, but I put 15 million US dollars of my own money into it. So they're kind of joined there together. Xpang have said that they are keen and looking forward to working with NEO and using basically NEO's powertrain and NEO's battery technology because Xpang is coming from a sort of a hybrid 
business model there and that will be phased out because they will no longer be able to get essentially license plates for, 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 for hybrids in China uh, shortly. It'll be only pure EV. So if you want to buy a new additional car as an EV, it'll have to be a pure EV. Uh, China uh, basically phasing out petrol here quite aggressively. So yes, I think we are going to see petrol, these, these battery swapping stations at Sinopec stations. That's my, my take on it, guys. And I do think we are in the near term going to see Xpang and, and Li uh, uh, joining in using that technology. And it's going to be good for NIO because 75% of the value of NIO lies in this shiny factory here. Where did it go? Uh, this one here, XPT, that is NIO's factory where they make all those uh, powertrain um, engine and battery components, the, ba the swapping components, all that stuff. So um, according to the Vice Secretary of China Association, the automobile manufacturers, uh, the great shortage in chip industry, um, yes, uh, Wag Wag is it Wakwa? Uh, that's a lovely name, Wakwa. Uh, you're totally right. This is a worldwide problem. Tesla's talking about it. VW is talking about it. They, in fact, stopped production of some of their models for a month because they're running out of chips. And Tesla is scrambling around for that. That's why they didn't smash that 500,000 uh, delivery target uh, uh, at the end of last year because there aren't enough chips around. It's a big problem. Uh, there is a huge chip sh shortage and the whole logistics issues around COVID have made that harder. The US-China trade war has made that harder because everyone's now trying to be self-reliant on that. They're not selling to one another the technology that they were before. So that is a, uh, a bottleneck for the whole industry, everybody, and not just EVs, but of course EVs have a lot of chips in them. So uh, that is something that is, is little, it's holding back the whole industry a little bit. Uh, absolutely, you have a point. Um, and that might well continue into Q2. It might actually continue for most of 2021, I think. x competition is good for Neo, similar to BMW and Audi in the 90s. I think, you know, it. I think at this point, the competition is good. It just helps everybody roll out infrastructure. At, the, at this moment, I think the competition is ICEs. And I think that's basically what Elon's saying. That's what Neo's saying. That's what everyone's saying. That's your competition. You need to convert people's mindsets from petrol to electric. It doesn't really matter how many EV cars are out there at the moment. Do you think Apple has interest in any of Neo's 150 patents around battery and battery swapping, says Scott? Possibly. I mean, battery swapping isn't a pure Neo play, right? BYD has been doing it up for some years. All of these electric buses that we have in China, and they're mostly electric now in, in, in the sort of more modern cities like Shenzhen, uh, they do battery swapping. We have battery swapping for... Uh, heavy duty uh, vehicles, mining vehicles, these kind of guys, they use battery swapping. Uh, so it isn't a entirely proprietary technology to Neo. They're not the only ones doing it. Now they're doing it very smartly and uh, they're doing it very beautifully in a very small space. Uh, before Neo, the battery swapping plants, uh, if you can call them that, uh, tended to be very, very large, very, very large footprint. And that, of course, makes them more expensive. And that's fine if you have a big mine or something and, you know, you are making billions and you put one there for yourself and that's how you swap. But from a, from a kind of consumer point of view, of course, that isn't so ideal. So they might, they, they might. Uh, I, I think it'd be interesting to see where Apple goes with this. I think they'll focus a lot on the kind of consumer interaction, on the tech, on the design and uh, I do think there'll be a Neo competitor down the road. But again, actually, I think it's good for Neo. I think we, the more people we have at a high end level of, of design and development and, and tech, it, A, it, it pushes everybody. You know, if you have a competitor in your business or your life, it actually makes you work harder. It, it makes you compete. And that's also why Tesla, I think, is great for Neo because Tesla is doing a great job and it puts pressure on Neo to keep up with that. Many rumors surrounding Apple EV. Could Hyundai Magna be a by BYD or an established legacy company, CP? Well, my view on that would be, I don't think it's going to be one of the big car manufacturers because they're going to struggle with Apple's philosophy that's so different to that of a Hyundai or Nissan or you know any of these big guys. So I think it'll be more like a, like a Geely. It'll be more like a Foxconn. It'll be somebody who is set up as a kind of contract manufacture for someone. It could be JSE, it could be GAC, it could be SAIC, it could be one of these uh, Chinese state-owned guys. Uh, I mean, they're doing a good job with NEO, right? Uh, but then with that, they're going to have to buy in more technology because like, you know, XPT here, NEO is making the core technology themselves. Uh, we have to see whether Apple wants to make those components because Apple typically doesn't make very much. They typically design and do R&D and then outsource it completely. And so you might see an interesting combination there of, of, of companies working together. But I do think that's still somewhere sort of three to five years off. 
Price prediction before March 1st, the evening uh, earnings rather. Well, let's look at our lovely little chart. Where did you go? Where did our chart go? So many windows here. There we go. The trajectory we are on at the moment is what if we are continue on this trajectory, we would get to I'm at a percentage scale that doesn't tell me much, does it? Um, right, here we go. What happened to our what happens here? Percentage log what? What happened to the chart? Okay, let me hit refresh on that, guys. Uh, it's because we still have Tesla on here, that's why. <laughs> here it is. Um, uh, we are, if we at this current scale by 1st of March, we look at, we should be at, on this current path, sort of, yeah, you're not going to get very excited by this, are you? Uh, I would say, actually, this line should be a little bit higher, because I've changed the scale here. And based on that, we should be at sort of $62, $63. Now, do you see my green line in here, my little zigzags? That's how the stock trades, right? So we, we could be up there or we could be down here. But at the moment, we are moving in, on, on this kind of path. And that's the trajectory I see for it. So, you know, we might be higher. The Sinopec news, I think, is a, is a, is a big one. And we have to see how the market digests it. If they do watch it at all, they pick it up because you kind of need to have... And a Neo app on your phone in Chinese, or you need to watch Felix Finance. <laughs> and, and then you can see them here shaking hands on it. So interesting to see how far that gets picked up. Hopefully the Reddit crowd are going to spread this uh, quite nicely. Uh, according to Beijing National Vehicle Innovation Center, um, sorry guys, I missed that here. So lots of questions. Uh, Frank, uh, chip shortages primarily affect OTS chips which is why everyone is making their own. Tesla has a big short-term advantage there. Okay, thanks for that. Maybe that's why somebody was saying earlier on that Neo is, is starting to make their own chips, uh, which I think is an interesting one to look into. Uh, to be, Everybody wants to become self-sufficient, basically, in that. Ford has a stake in Rivian EV, Amazon as well. Yes, I mean, I, I'm not going to write Ford off, but it, it's, it's, some, it's a company that's easy to bag, <laughs> if I can say that, CP. Uh, lots of debt, very low valuations. Merger of Neo and Xpeng, uh, Roger, I don't see it, I must say. I don't see it. I think China doesn't want to create an Alibaba. They don't want to have somebody with 55% market share. They made that very clear. They want to have a number of great champion brands out there that are Chinese-owned and not just the one. So I think uh, mergers will be discouraged. Okay, Stefanos is a, is a fan here of the Neo house. I appreciate that. that um, I mean, look at the, the Apple uh, flagship stores. Remember when they first opened and everyone's like, this is insane. They sell like one mobile phone basically and, a, and an iPod at the time. Uh, why do they have like a Louis Vuitton shop uh, in the most expensive bit of real estate? And they're still doing it. It is obviously working for them. It's pronounced uh, Waka. Okay, ap apologies there, Waka. Uh, thank you for letting me know how to pronounce your uh, beautiful name. Is NASDAQ closed on Monday? Yes, it is. Uh, we have a holiday. We have time to do some research, time to reassess our portfolios, see what we're doing. And uh, Thomas says Chinese government support there. Yes, I do think there's a good, strong government support. And uh, I appreciate Atimius your kind comments there. He has subscribed, Atimius. So you guys do that too. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure if you are subscribed, turn on the alerts because on the 1st of March, it's going to be the biggest day of your year so far. It is Neo Life Earnings Call. We're going to be listening and watching that live. And it's, it's actually really insightful to listen to the questions of the analysts. When you hear the JP Morgan guys, the city, et cetera, asking their questions, you really get a feel for where the sentiment lies there, what they, they think is important. So um, fantastic. I appreciate all your guys' comments. Uh, very much appreciated everybody tuning in, guys. Uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, wrap up of where we are. Basically, we have here on the Neo app, this is from uh, my phone, guys. I've got it on my phone here, so you can see it on the on the screen. We have the Sinopec chairman meeting with William Lee here, the chap in the woolly hat and the goatee. And mentioning goatees, guys, hit the like button. I donate one cent for every like to the gentle barn and our goat friends. Um, they are meeting here. Why? Because you have a battery swapping station here uh, next to a Sinopec. Um, you can see that red roof there in the background. That is a Sinopec petrol station, and they are cooperating here, shaking hands. Why is Sinopec important? Because China has a petrol station monopoly. There are two players. One, the bit on the right, the lighter area here, that sort of ochre, yellowish, brownish thing. 
27,000 petrol stations are all Sinopec. It's a monopoly. And these are the areas where all the, not all, but the majority of high earning provinces are. That's where the money is essentially, uh, mostly in China, with very few exceptions. And, you know, that's where Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing is. And that's 27,000 petrol stations and it's fully government owned. And they've been wondering for some time what to do with them because uh, Sinopec, world's largest refiner, they want to make money on their petrol stations. Petrol will be phased out. Some people are saying as early as 2030 in China. Um, so they need to get on this electric bandwagon. They've been dabbling a little bit in charging stations, but now we're putting battery swap stations there. And at the same time, the China government is telling us that battery swapping is an integral part of the EV revolution that the Chinese government is backing. And NIO has had a hard time to get 600 battery swapping stations up. We only have 120 by now. We promised 600 by the end of last year. Why? Because they said, well, how to get the real estate? Then you have to talk to five government agencies to get the permits. Then you have to get talk to the electricity company to get the power. And it takes forever. Sinopec can solve that problem like that. They have the land. They have the power. They are the government they can get all the permits done in no time whatsoever. So we are going to see this role of the battery swapping station. At the same time, we have Xpang saying that they are going looking forward to using NEO's technology, which is the battery swapping technology. It's the powertrain. Here you have it. Here's the quote. Um, Xpang Motors co-founder Xia Heng he said, he spoke highly of XPT, uh, of, that's a NEO, XPT is NEO, the EDS products, and expects an anticipation for the future in-depth cooperation between the two sides on the electric power platform because they, he is making at Xpeng, he is making a hybrid essentially, and he needs to go full EV. Otherwise, his customers will no longer get licenses to buy these cars in China. That will go 100% EV shortly. So you have that cooperation between these two. Li Auto is also in on this loop of these three companies. Li Auto, again, an early investor in NIO. In fact, NIO asked them to be a co-founder, but they said, no, our philosophy is too different, but they still invested money into it. And I believe Xpang is going to adopt the engines, the powertrains, the technology of NEO. They're going to buy it from XPT, which is NEO's beautiful, shiny factory. Here it is. That's NEO's factory. They're going to buy that technology from them. They're going to buy also the battery swapping from them. That will be my bet because you're going to get a broad network of battery swapping stations across China at Sinopec stations. And therefore, it makes sense for other brands to use them. And it's going to be Chinese brands, just like the power charging stations that everyone's building and that the government's building. They are standardized. And the only company that isn't following that standard is Tesla. So it's basically Chinese companies over here and Tesla over there. And where does all the government support go? Well, Tesla's enjoyed a lot of it, but I think uh, now the time is to really boost the uh, the NEOs, the XPANGs and the Lees. So that's basically the wrap up here, guys. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate your subscriptions to our community. And um, uh, Ark being mentioned here, Kathy Woods being mentioned here. We're going to do some more coverage on that. And um, people are excited about here, about new houses. I appreciate that, guys. Guys, thanks very much, everyone, for tuning in. I really enjoy and love our community. I also really love it when you guys disagree with me. It makes me smarter. It makes, I think, us all smarter. As always, not financial advice. This is straight from the goat's mouth. So uh, please, guys, here is Baron von Goat. Uh, uh, one of our mascots, uh, please hit that like button and I'll keep supporting the Gentle Barn, these beautiful sanctuaries. So I'll donate one cent for every like to the Gentle Barn. So guys, keep that coming. And thanks for tuning in. That's a wrap here from Hong Kong. Have a beautiful evening or morning, depending on where you are. And see you very soon.